Welcome back to my channel, I'm Satnam B. Today we're going to be creating a digital wipe effect within After Effects. This effect can be used on text, logos, and even motion, such as 3D models or videos. The project file will be available on my Gumroad, so just check the description for the link. So first things first, jump into After Effects and open a new comp. For this, we just need a standard HD size, so 1920 by 1080, and this can be set to a duration of 10 seconds. We can call this comp base visuals as this will house all of our actual graphics or video assets that we want to have the effect on. To give us something to work with, I'll be using a text layer just to create some text, which can be edited at a later date. Next, I'll be using the rectangle tool just to draw a background border. You can drag and drop any asset within this composition and just use that as your base if you want. Using the align panel, I'm making sure everything is aligned to the center of the composition. Next, we need to create a new composition by right clicking the project panel and clicking new composition. We can use the same settings as previously, but this time we're going to change the name to blocks as this will be where we'll store our block effect. So the first thing we need to do in this new composition is draw a rectangle to create our background plane. I'm going to draw it slightly larger than the actual composition size, just so we have a little bit extra room to play with. So in this case, I'm using a rectangle set to the size of 2300 by 1300. And then again, just centrally align this. Next, bring in the base visuals composition and drop it underneath the new rectangle layer that we've just created. Now with the rectangle layer selected, we need to add a few effects to this. The first effect we can add is an effect called mosaic. This will help us create the blocky tile effect. So for the horizontal blocks, I want it to be around 50 blocks wide. And then for the vertical, around 20. These variables can be adjusted to whatever you want. Um, I just want them to be slightly more narrower and a bit more taller. Next, we need to add another effect called rough and edges. This is an effect that pretty much does what it says on the tin. It just roughens the edges and it just makes things look a little bit more messy. But we're going to use this to create this sort of glitchy effect. This effect needs to go before the mosaic effect. We need to adjust a few settings. So we need to change the border to about 500 and the edge sharpness to about 10. It looks like nothing's happened yet, but this is all expected. Next, we need to draw a mask. This will actually show how the effect works. Select the rectangle tool and click the mask setting and then draw out a new mask on the sort of left side of the composition. Toggle down to the mask settings on the shape layer and hit the stopwatch on mask path. This will allow us to animate the mask path. On the timeline, move your cursor to about three seconds in and using the selection tool, select the mask points on the right and drag them out to cover the entire composition. Let me quickly just change the color of the rectangle to white just so we can see the actual animation effect take place. These phasing blocks is pretty much what will build up the actual effect. We just need to alpha map the base visuals to the rectangle layer. By alpha matting it, it will mean that whatever's on the base visuals composition will only be affected. It will mean you can have this being set to a transparent map on the final outcome, meaning you can put this on any background or any visual you want. Now the blocks have been sorted, we need to create another composition. Again, using the same settings, this time we're gonna name it wiper effect. Now inside this composition, we need to add the blocks comp twice. We're going to offset it slightly just so that we can see a difference between the two comps. We need to alpha map the bottom composition to the top and then invert the selection. This will give us a sort of chunk animation which passes from left to right. You can play with the distance of the offsetting to create more extreme or larger block reveals. On the bottom blocks comp, we need to add a new effect called Minimax. This will allow us to remove any additional stray pixels that will be generated when you alpha mat. We need to just set the radius to one and the operation to minimum. And lastly, the channel set to alpha and color. When you toggle this effect on and off, you'll notice that some of the lines don't seem as harsh. This will help later on when we apply the visual effect to this digital wiper. Now for the fourth and final time, we're going to create a new composition. This will be the final one that will house our visual effects and everything we've used so far. 
you can call this render or main effect or main wipe, whatever works for yourself. Let's start by bringing in the base visuals comp into our new composition. Next, we need to go into the blocks composition and copy the shape layer. Now back in the main wipe comp, we need to paste this shape layer back in and again, alpha mat the base visuals comp to this shape layer. Next, we need to bring in the wiper effect comp and set the blending mode to screen. With the wiper effect composition selected, we need to add a few effects. So we're gonna start with CC glass. This will help us to create a sort of beveled effect to the different blocks. These settings aren't 100% for every comp, so you will have to adjust. But for this case, I'm using the property type to be set to alpha, softness will be set to 0 0.5, height to minus 80, and displacement to 200. In the light settings, I'm changing it to point light. We don't need to worry about shading. We need to apply a displacement map to sort of offset the wiper effect a little bit to help create areas of high contrast. I'm going to add one displacement map and keep it as the default five horizontal and vertical displacements. And then I'm going to add another one, which I'm going to add more extreme values. Depending on the type of effect you're trying to create, it's best to play with these displacement settings to see how much you can push the sort of overlays. Next, we're going to add another effect. This time we're going to use the Colorama effect. This will help us to grade the actual glowing effect later on and can be used to help us achieve the sort of cyberpunk rainbow glowing effect. In the input phase, we need to add the wiper as the add input. Next, we can play with the phase shifting to sort of create more contrasting areas using the same color palette. So as you see with the blocks being built up, this sort of phase in between like green, blues, pinks, and purples. You can change this further by using the output cycle, a use preset palette, and then you can choose one of the selections there, or you can adjust the colors using the radial chart. Next, we're going to be adding a series of glows to create the sort of glowing effect. If you have deep glow or trap code star glow, then you're probably better off using those. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to be using the standard After Effects glow. So for the glow, we're going to increase the radius to about 80 pixels. We're also going to change the color loop to sawtooth A is greater than B. Next, by clicking Control D, we're going to duplicate the glow again. This time, we're going to change the radius to 200 and changing the glow operation to screen and then the color looping to triangle A, B, A. For this effect, I want the glows to be really extreme and sort of almost too much. But again, you can adjust these settings to depending on whatever you want to try and create. You can add more glows, more effects on top of this, but for now, I'm happy with this kind of style. The effect isn't too heavy, so it means it will render relatively quick and it can be used on pretty much everything. There's a few little tips and tricks I'm going to show on how to make this file a little bit more usable. The first is on the main wipe effect composition, select the shape layer and select the mask, then go to edit, copy with property links. Now go back into the blocks composition and select the mask on that shape layer. Hit control V and paste in the mask. But as you'll see, all the parameters will be marked red. This means that they are linked to another mask. The reason I did this, it means that if you adjust one mask in the main comp, it will adjust throughout. So it means you can at least always have everything looking the same. So you don't have to sort of repeat and make the same changes twice. Where this mask is the main driver for the animation, you can make it appear from the center, from the right, from the top, from the bottom, however you want. You can even add rotations and pretty much scale it. However, the cooler the mask animation, the cooler this reveal will actually be. So for this, I'm just trying to find the center point where the effect stops showing and it will begin to animate from the center going outwards. So now if we go into the base visuals comp, we can just bring in anything. So for instance, I'm just going to bring in my logo. I'm going to add a gradient map onto it and just have it go from a light gray to a dark gray. Now, if we go to the main wipe composition, we can see it's automatically updated and we didn't have to do anything. Where this effect pretty much only needs four compositions, I would say create a version of it, make it as a template, and then you can just always have it to just go back to if you ever need it. 
and then it means you have something to always work from so you can adjust the block sizes you can make the displacements look more extreme and you can just have more fun with it because you will have like a backup file ready to go as i said at the beginning of the video there is going to be a free project file available just jump over to my gum road and download it if you found this video useful please drop a comment please like and subscribe it really helps the channel grow thank you